Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm glad to be with you today. We're doing a study in 1 Corinthians, and I'm in chapter 2, and I ended last time in verse 7. So I'm going to reread 7 to you. I think this is very important, and maybe I better backtrack to verse 6. Howbeit, Paul is talking about the two wisdoms. That's what he's been talking about in Corinthians, and I won't repeat that again. So if you don't, if you didn't hear yesterday's program, then get on our website, um, the liberating, uh, spiritbroadcasting.net, and you will find these programs there. Okay, this is um, chapter 2, verse 6. Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them who are perfect, and he's talking about who are complete in Christ, who know their completeness. Now, we are complete in Christ, that is, our standing in Christ. But in order, but the problem is we don't know how complete we are. We don't know that. Our faith hasn't matured to that. And it's true. Jesus talked to his disciples and he said when they couldn't uh, calm the storms, he says, oh, you're of little faith. And then he said to the centurion, you're of great faith. And then he, then of Abraham, he was of perfect faith. So that's exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to mature us. He's maturing us in faith, not in works, hallelujah, <laughs> not in how much we do, but how much, how, how much do we believe Him? And God will take you to the edge of almost the cliff and uh, to let you know He is your total sufficiency and you can have total dependency upon Him because of His faithfulness. I mean, that's exactly where I live. I live knowing God's faithfulness. So whatever happens to me personally, whatever happens to my family, whatever happens in the ministry, whatever happens in the community, whatever happens might happen in our nation, whatever happens in the world, I know God is more faithful than what I'm seeing. And so, and I live from that. And so God has matured me in faith, and He has taken me beyond being just a little child. My sins are forgiven. He has personally, and I've, He's personally taken me beyond just knowing that who I am in Christ. And He has taken me on into fatherhood, knowing, and motherhood, knowing who, what it means to be an intercessor, and what it means to... Um, to uh, be a father in Christ. And it says in 2 Corinthians um, uh, that there are many um, teachers in Christ, but not many fathers. And that, that means that there's not, in the body of Christ, there's not many that father, okay, father you. Now, they're going to be the wise ones. There's the ones that are going to give you the wisdom. They're not, they're not going to be the ones that just tell you what you want to hear and make you feel good all the time. They're going to be the ones that may give you hard things, but they're going to give you the truth. My husband always says, if you have a true friend, that true friend is going to tell you the truth, whether it's hard to hear or not. And that's the truth. So Paul now is saying that, um, that he is not speaking from man's wisdom, he's speaking from the wisdom or the mind of Christ. Whenever you see the wisdom of God, he, that it means from the mind of Christ, because in Christ's mind, he is in Christ. We are anointed with his wisdom. And it says this in, in verse 7, But we speak wisdom, wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, if we think about it, you know, I talked about us moving from little children to young men to fathers. We also move, another way of saying it really, is to say that um, uh, we move from uh, justification. We know that we're justified by faith alone, and that's just as if our sins are forgiven. That's a little child 
uh, understanding, and we move from that understanding, we move to understanding who we are, to we're just we're sanctified also by faith. That's where the church has been stumbled for years because they're trying to make themselves perfect or holy by their own self-effort, and that's what God is um, is bringing us into a new understanding of our sanctification in Christ. It's not by works of our righteousness we're sanctified because by the one offering he has sanctified us forever. And so so he is my holiness and he is my wisdom and he is my justification. But then on past that, Romans 8 goes into the next understanding and that's understanding our glorification. Well, he mixes suffering with glory in Romans 8, which is very interesting. If we don't understand suffering, you see everybody, all of Christianity thinks that we can get out of our suffering. Well, yes, we do live from the power of God, that is true, but suffering is a very vital part of Christianity. It's not something to be avoided, even though if you can avoid it, that's wonderful. Your flesh isn't going to like it, but the Lord puts his suffering upon us at time. We bear it. We, uh, we, and it's called the sufferings of Christ. Wow. Um, uh, Philippians talks about that. Philippians in chapter 3 says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Well, that's great to know that his resurrected life, he lives his life within me, and that's very powerful. But then it goes on to say, in the fellowship of his suffering. Well, I had a friend once say that, well, I want to know the power of his resurrection, but I don't do suffering. Well, none of us do it uh, joyfully at first until we know the secret that glory really comes out of suffering. Now, um, how, can I, how can I say such a thing? Well, actually, Romans 8 says that. The great victory chapter, Romans 8, says that uh, suffering comes, uh, suffering and glory are the opposite ends of the same thing because it says this, and I, I believe it's verse 18, but I'm going to have to look that one up. I think it's verse 18. Maybe I should have done my homework a little bit better so that I could make this a little smoother. But in, in verse, um, uh, oh, it is 18. Thank you, Lord. Okay, verse 18, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So Paul, uh, Paul even said it. Paul says that I fill up that which is behind of the sufferings of Christ. So to say that we Christians are never to have suffering is really such a baby point of view. You see, we need to get out of the playpen and understand how glory is going to be brought into other people and how death might work in me. I might go through a great suffering, but it's going to bring life in other people and how all that works together, how these opposites do work together. We talked about that a little, t little bit next l last time, how that um, weakness and strength live in the same body. Well, weakness, well, suffering and glory do too. I do suffer as a human. I have things that, 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 beset me. I have things that bother me. I have problems in my family. I have problems with myself. Paul had a great problem with himself when he had covetousness, and he had to understand that the covetousness and the sins that he was doing in Romans 7 was not really him, it was really because Satan had deceived him and made him think he was an independent self, so therefore able to conquer his own, his own problems. See, when we really learn how to embrace negatives, embrace the suffering, then we can move into the wisdom of how to, to move into the glory, of how God is going to bring glory out of suffering. And I always say, if I had a pencil, and here is a pencil right here, there's a point on one end and there's uh, an eraser on the other end. So when I'm pricked in my flesh, 
you see, with something, some point, something that comes into my life that causes me some pain, you see, if I fight it or fear it or run from it, I'm not going to find the glory that God has in it. But if I can push through and say, I'm just going to embrace this and see what God is going to do, he will then bring you all the way through to the eraser where he erases it and causes the glory to be manifest right through this suffering. So suffering and glory are the opposite ends of the same thing. That's exactly what this verse says in Romans. It says, for the re for I reckon that the suffering sufferings, meaning there might be many, of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So suffering and glory are the opposite ends of the same thing. And I love to say that and Corinthians is just full of those opposites. I love that in 2 Corinthians, and let me just go to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, For we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. So see, those opposites are right there. We're perplexed. We feel perplexed. Our mind, we, it feels confused. But we're not in despair. Why? Because we're always living from knowing. We know that the Lord has an answer. We know that the truth is really within us. We wait on it. We know that the wisdom is within us and we wait on it, you see. So we're not in despair. So yes, we have it, but we also know that God is more faithful than any problem that I can ever have and delivers me out of all of them. If he doesn't deliver me outwardly, and we're not always delivered outwardly, but he will deliver us inwardly. That's a promise. And so it says, we're persecuted yet not forsaken. So why would anybody even want to want Christianity if they really knew that it was a package that you're going to have? When you unro unwrap this free package of Christ, you're going to find out that there's suffering there. Well, people say, whoa, whoa, like my friend, I don't do suffering. Well, you're not going to mature as a Christian unless you walk into, walk through your valley of the shadow of death, then you will find that there's no evil that has any power over you. You see, we're always trying to get out of them. We're always trying to get away from our human reactions that are fearful and trembling and, and confused. And if we would walk through it and trust God and know that his sufficiency is, is within me, then we would find the power. We would find the victory. We would find the wisdom in the situation. It says, always bearing about in the body, in our human flesh, the dying of the Lord Jesus. And Philippians 3 says that I might know the, uh, the uh, fellowship of his suffering. So it's not even you, that's, it's not even you're, you're, you're joined to him, you're co-heirs with his suffering, that's true. You're co-heirs with his power, but you're also joined, your humanity is a part of the, his expression as well. Your body is a part of how he, he expresses himself. So you see, so he's there dying within you. It says he's laying his life down. See, we always think that after we're Christians that we, we escape all of the suffering. We won't have, we're just going to have the good times. Let the good times roll because it's just nothing but peace, joy. And yes, peace and joy and understanding and the fruit of the spirit is all true. It is there, but, but we've got to get used to what we do with our humanity what we do with the feelings of insufficiency, what we do with our confusions. And w when we know that yet we might bear with these things, when you walk through your suffering, when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're going to bear exactly the, uh, uh, the same thing that Jesus bore. He walked through his valley of the shadow of death and he no evil was there that could really harm him you see, because we take away the power of evil by not giving Satan any power. So you start embracing your suffering. You start embracing your negatives. And as you do, but at the same time, you trust, you trust that the Holy Spirit is your answer in the middle of it. And, and you will, through this, really, this is the real truth of intercession. I'm starting to bring you into what the fatherhood level is really about. It's a, it's it, intercession is more than just uh, prayer. It's more than just everybody getting together and kneeling down and and doing fervent prayer. That's wonderful. 
the uh, prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That is true, but most of the New Testament is about this kind of intercession. Paul's whole life demonstrated this kind of intercession where his life was always being threatened. He was always considered to be a heretic half of the time, always considered to be a weak, a, a false apostle. You see, he was always, that was always happening to him, but yet he lived by the power of God and it never stopped him. He was never defeated because he was always trusting in the spirit and he was always bringing glory to everybody else. And that's exactly what this is saying. Uh, always uh, bearing about in the body, in your human body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be manifested in our body. So we have death working and life at the same time. Death working in our humanity, in our flesh, but life coming out of it for others. Actually, I was just with a friend of mine who is just going through a terrible time within herself, and she's really coming to the place of truly uh, understanding her father, the fatherhood level. And she's going through uh, everything being stripped from her. And you're going to go through a stripping if, if you're going to mature in the spirit. And God will take away everything you're depending on. He will take away the props so that you're left with nothing but your hope only being in Christ. And so, uh, and, and, and I said to her, I said, but, you know, if you would start embracing the, these, uh, the, this pain instead of running from it, God will bring glory because you're really entering into the life of what it means to be an intercessor. And we've got to understand how to embrace instead of fear, fight, and escape any of any fearful, hard places. Because those are the very hard places God has put you in because we're meant to be, uh, 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 it says in Second Corinthians, that um, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and let me just turn to that. It says, we have the ministry of reconciliation. So if you have the ministry of reconciliation, then you're meant to reconcile and be put in hard places So that, because you're the one that's meant to be to reconcile that by your faith. So death will work in you, but life will work in others. And God will give you the wisdom on exactly how to do that. That does not mean that you always just are a doormat. It does not mean that. Jesus never was a doormat. A lot of people think, well, then I just have to lay my life down and just take everything that everybody's doing to me. Jesus never did that. He never, he, the Pharisees tried to put him down every minute, and he never took that from the Pharisees, you see, and we don't either. Uh, no man, he says, no man takes my life from me, but I'll freely give it of myself. So we have to understand we're not meant to be doormats, but and God will give you wisdom on what to do and what not to do in the situation. Sometimes it's you're meant to stay. Sometimes you're meant not to stay. And he is your wisdom on that. And you find out exactly which, because the point is that the people are reconciled. The point is not to make it ha a happier place for you. The point is that they come to find their fullness in Christ. And, and, so, and so God will put you in very peculiar places because you're, you have the ministry of reconciliation. And so, so and which will bring, other, will bring glory to your world. Now, that's the whole point. Suffer, if suffering and glory are the opposite ends of the same reality, and they both live within me, yes, I'll suffer on my flesh level, but the glory of God lives within me, you see, then you're going to be able to impart glory to other people. You're going to be able to impart life to other people. So that you'll, you'll, we want to impart. We, we talk a lot about impartation. Well, this is exactly how we impart. Well, most people think, well, no, you do it by some powerful way to impart. Well, a lot of intercessors are, are imparting to other people and they're hidden. There's a lot of intercessors that are hidden. They're uh, mothers that are believing for their children, and they, the children never knew that it was really the mother that stood for them. Maybe the mother's already gone to heaven. And you know what? Jesus is at the right hand of the Father interceding until his enemy, enemies be made his footstool. And we're in Christ, and we're seated there in Christ. So we're also interceding. So I think even the ones that have gone before us are still interceding for us. And I, I believe that. I think everything works together for our good. 
every evil thing that happens to you works together for your good. Every good and wonderful thing that happens to you works together for your good. Um, every, um, every temptation that you have will work together for your good and bring glory. But we've got to understand what temptation is. We've got to understand how, uh, our, how we have reactions in our flesh that are not sin and yet tempted and how the temptation is meant to be there and we can use it as an asset really because glory will come out of anything that I suffer. And as I stand in truth and in faith, you see, God will bring uh, glory inside of me, the manifested glory of God inside of me and also inside of the people that I'm believing for and standing in faith for. So this wisdom that is hidden, God, uh, it's Paul is saying that he even speaks that hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So just know that glory is not just some arbitrary thing. It's manifested through suffering. Suffering and glory are the opposite ends of the same thing. And yes, we suffer. But yet we are, you know what, when we meet Jesus at the final day and um, he'll say, oh, my good and faithful servant, look what you did for me. And we're going to say, what? I don't even know what. I felt so uh, limited in what I did for you. He's going to say, oh, my dear and faithful friend. You are my friend. You truly manifested my life here in this painful place. In this hard place that I put you in, you manifested my glory. Oh, my dear and faithful friend, you have done so much for me and through me and by me. You, you don't even know. And I'm going to be so surprised. And we're all going to be surprised because we have no idea. Because most of the time we're feeling weak. We're feeling like we're not doing anything. We're feeling insufficient. And, and, but we don't live by, that, by our feelings. We don't judge by sight. We don't judge by feelings. We ju live by the power of God, you see. So it is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is using us in the most menial places. Um, you know, I heard just recently somebody said, well, what great thing are, are you doing to bring light to this dark world? And uh, one minister said, well, I'm ministering the truths of Ezekiel. Another minister said, I'm teaching on, you know, this subject and that subject. And, but, but a mother said, well, I'm raising my three children in Christ and teaching them the truths of Christ. And that's what I'm doing to bring light to a dark world. So it may be just that. It may be just that. It may be that God has put you in a, a business that is very hard. Maybe he's put you in a marriage that's very hard. Maybe he's, wherever he has put you, know that uh, you can live in praise and victory and not in defeat because these, these sufferings that you're suffering, they're not even your suffering. They're the sufferings of Christ. And you press towards the mark of the high calling because the high calling of Christ is this life of intercession where, yes, death works in you and the death of dying of Jesus works in your body, but the life of Jesus also manifests through you and imparts life to other people. So if you really want to understand the deep things of God, you start declaring that I already have your wisdom and, and just say to the Lord, thank you for maturing me on past babyhood where I'm just judging everything by how I feel or what things look like. And thank you for putting me in hard places so you can bring forth your glory to other people. So um, not too many people will ask that prayer, will pray that prayer. But I'm telling you, if you want the glory of God to be manifested, then uh, stop asking to be delivered from all of the evil things that might befall, beset you, you see, because it's there, those very places that God has put you to bring light to a dark place. And it might not be any place that you would even think. I mean, we don't think, surely God wouldn't do that. Well, 
You know what? I've written a book called The Treasures of Darkness. If you want to understand more about the treasures of uh, how glory and, um, and suffering really are united together in one reality, write me and I'll give you this book. I'll send you this book. If you, if you write me, I'll, I'll give you that book. So you write me and I'll send it to you. And you can find me on the internet on, at theliberatingsecret.org and also spiritbroadcasting.net. So you can find all these radio and TV programs there on spiritbroadcasting.net. Also on Cross TV, and I think we're on in YouTube. So I think we're getting out as much as we can. Actually, some people from South Africa have just con contacted me and they have been freed up thanking we're just thanking the Lord, praising the Lord. And I know that it could not come because of the excellency of my speech. It's coming because of what I'm teaching and preaching is coming from the power of the Spirit that really transforms people. So I'm thankful for that. And we're thankful to the Lord's faithfulness, that He's always faithful to uh, bring glory out of every hard place. Just like Moses, uh, God told Moses, um, uh, don't... Uh, don't strike the rock, speak to it. And of course, uh, Moses struck the rock and uh, he didn't get to go into the promised land. Well, if you just speak to your hard place and declare that God is here, God is in the midst, and he is about reconciliation, you see, living water will come out and it will put you into the promised land every time. You'll have promised land understanding every time. You see, but we're always trying to get rid of our hard places. We're trying to run from them. We're trying to avoid them. We're, tr we're fearing them because we don't understand that God means for you to be in a hard place because he's going to bring glory and life to other people through your suffering and through the suffering that he co-suffers with us. If you suffer with me, you'll be glorified together with me, he says in Romans 8. That suffering with him, you're not su suffering a lone person. Your suffering, he, it is his suffering within you. It says that we might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death so that we might understand what 2 Corinthians chapter 4 means, always bearing about the body, in the body, the sufferings of Christ, you see. And it says in Colossians, we don't understand these verses, so we hardly teach them. And we need to teach this to the body of Christ because we don't know. We might be entering into the worst suffering the world has seen, ever seen. And we need to know that in the midst of it, God's glory is manifested all over the place. And you are a light in, a, in the dark place that God has put you in. So I just thank you for joining me today. And we're going to continue this, continue talking about um, the deep things of God. That's what we're going to talk about next time. That's what we've been talking about the whole time. So join us next time and may God richly bless you. And thank you for joining us on The Liberating Secret. Goodbye.